this morning, this, um, I mean, you know, this is a digital rag anyways, but public orthodoxy, mm -hmm. they, and there's like this, there's the one um, person, you know, she does like the hit pieces and she's the one who went undercover in like a Rocor parish and, mm -hmm. you know, faked being interested and tried to basically get all this information to, you know, present these people as white nationalists and all this stuff, whatever. But oh. she put out this this article, um, which is, I mean, it's it's actually hilarious. I was reading, I was like, is this satire? Because in one sentence, she basically accuses, um, she's talking about Father Peter, and then she's talking about DPH. Mm -hmm. she's like, and he's transphobic, homophobic, fatphobic, and ableist, like, all in all in all in one sentence. It was like, wow. It's like, like she needed to put all those like it's a requirement. Like, so she just did it real quick. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, just yeah, threw yeah. them all in one sentence. I, I want to applaud her for just being able to do something like that with a straight face. Anyways, I bring it up because she had this whole thing, was talking about like it was called like the conspiracy cleric or something like that. So talking about clerics who go along with the conspiracies around like, you know, uh, COVID and all that stuff mm. and the subsequent, you know, jabs and everything. Mm. I was thinking to myself, the reason why I'm bringing this up is at this point, you know, for someone like the, 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 the tone and temperature of her article, not only is it poorly written, but it was just, it's like, are, did you write this in like 2020? It was exactly. It's like, there's so much formal information now from sources that I'm sure she would find familiar to mm -hmm. and friendly to whatever her viewpoint are that say like, yeah, actually vaccine injury is a thing. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, you know, like, real. It, it's, it's so obvious. So I'm just I think, I think science, <laughs> science, the journal science, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday published an article basically saying, Yes, the the woke poke gave people autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. I just, I wow. mean, I just saw it in zero. Like it's, which is so. That's it's. It's exactly what you're saying. It's exactly what you're saying. Let's see, zero I, hedge. Because these aren't things that this is what's so fascinating. This is, I mean, I hope it doesn't feel like a complete non sequitur me bringing it up. Because I'm just saying that's like things are so obviously easy to research. You don't need to go and find some sort of, you know. No, the daily tinfoil hat. No, you know what I mean. Like you can go on any any. That's why, like, I maintain. Uh, forgive me, Father. I don't mean to interrupt, right. but um, the easiest way to throw everyone off the trail of you being in the CIA is to wear a shirt that says "I'm in the CIA." In the CIA. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody will ever think like it's you that you're in this because, like, they don't have to hide anything. You just yeah. keep it out there in the public knowledge, yeah. and then hire the right. best. PR people and you're good. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was actually on July 3rd. Right here. Uh, here, I'll show you. It's crazy. And it's like science.org. <laughs> link between coronavirus vaccines and long covid like illness starts to gain acceptance yeah okay. literally science magazine yeah yeah and it starts off with have saved millions of lives but right, it has to it has but... to. oh like all vaccines they can cause side effects including yeah. rare cases of abnormal blood clotting and heart inflammation so they're admitting now no yeah that it does cause oh but it's We've rare and it's like always oh, but how rare how many millions or billions of vaccines did you get <laughs> we've always right? been at war with eurasia guys oh, we've oh, always oh, been at war with eurasia at war yeah let's start this podcast if we haven't already but let's and let's... look at this another apparent complicating suite of symptoms that resembles long covid so it's like wait a minute it resembles long covid yeah, Wait, it's but not. What if, it what if that's actually what long COVID is? I, yeah, <laughs> and for has real. always been. <laughs> for real. Like, 
And like, what is what are we name? doing? It's in, what a it's science.org. And it's like, that's not you're not following the science. No, yeah. I'm literally following I science.org. Like, really? science. <laughs> it's it's like, Okay, so hi, welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm going to ask a real quick icebreaker question just to because we've already got a good thing going. But um, I think this is regional and it might not be applicable to everyone, but this question came up um, and I kind of liked it. What is your favorite gas station like convenience store chain? Like when you see one, you're like, oh, I'm going to that one. Like, so for me, here in uh, Missouri, it's Quick Casey's. Trip. Quick Trip. Interesting. Interesting, Father. Interesting. Yeah, are, are we talking about just like for the gas itself? No. No. Okay. The reason I ask is because Quick for Trip like is... like a little store type of thing? Yeah. Like, so maybe this is just a Midwest thing. I don't know. But mm-hmm. like Quick Trip is known as kind of like it's kind of synonymous with like Kansas City like Quick Trip is the gas station here and they have their mm-hmm. own food they have like their own mm-hmm. snacks and their own donuts and stuff like that so you mm-hmm. go get Quick Trip brand taquitos or donuts or whatever mm-hmm. right yep. um and then it re- is regional it is regional sure but you guys are both from California so I thought maybe there was like some overlap there of being like oh no it's mm-hmm. like Chubby's or something like that I don't know like some the, my oh, other suggest, my other guess would be Loves, but Loves is regional too. Like yeah, I didn't, even, and that's more of like a truck stop, right? Right. Yeah. But I didn't even. This isn't even a thing until I came to the Midwest, because the For real. Well, hold okay. on, hold on. When we when we were coming up, don't you remember stop and stop and go? Wasn't there stop yeah. and goes everywhere? Yeah, there was stop. That and was go. where everybody went to, but they used to call it stop and rob. That's what they called it. In <laughs> <laughs> but they called it like stop and run. Seven in Vegas, thing. in Vegas, it's terribles. People from Vegas will know terribles is where you go. It's named after terrible Herbst, who I guess was some sort of a car racing guy, but they've got the awesome car washes and they have the same thing. All the terribles uh, products, you know? Yeah. So um, the seven Eleven's not like a thing out in California. Like does, do it is, have... but there's rarely gas stations attached. To yeah, it. that doesn't. Seven Eleven doesn't count in California. Oh. Mm-mm. Okay, because well, it's a standalone mm-hmm. convenience store. Casey's is planning like a takeover of Kansas City, and I, for one, am in favor of it because I'm not a huge fan. Are you of- are you speaking like hyperbolically, or like did you? No, there's an article where they're they're coming for like this territory. Like they're like they're gonna start setting up more shops, like more uh, more Casey's in Kansas City and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. the thing with Casey's is they have their own kitchen, so they yeah. have like their own pizza. Doesn't say Pe- the pizza. I know the pizza. The pizza is good. I like it. It's not. Uh, some people rave about it. I think it's good. It's like, hey, this is pretty solid. Like I like this pizza, and it used to be cheap. You know, it's not cheap yeah. anymore, but it used to be pretty cheap. But their donuts are next level like their donuts beat the beat the snot out of like quick trips like quick mm. trips donuts are actually pretty awful and i'm not really a huge donut guy i'm anymore. a donut guy so i think donuts are okay in moderation like they're good but like when do you eat them why you know? would you have a donut when you can have a danish Be, well i'm from the yeah. midwest father okay like uh, like i'm i didn't grow up eating donuts i ate a like, lot i feel like i lost a lot of people there but i'm just telling you I'm a continental a Danish, yeah, guy. a Danish, a Danish, I'm a Danish man. Too. Give me some of that fruit topping, fruit center. So, oh yeah, Danish. So I guess, I guess on the West Coast, at least, at least California, it definitely extends into Arizona, into Nevada. There's, um, there's AMPM. So this right. is the AM, AM, I was trying to have. AM, this is the conversation with the, yeah, with the Arco, yep. ga- Arco gas. Yep. Arco, and the Arco gas is usually way cheaper than all the other gas, mm-hmm. and it's good. And the AMPM, yeah, and it's, it's like that. AMPM has 
it's yep. usually yep. big. Yep. It's got all kinds of variety of all kinds of different things. If you're traveling on any of the yep. major freeways and yep. you're like, oh, hey, I need to stop and get some something. Yep. Ding, ding, you ding. stop and you go to the A.M. P.M. Before. That's for what sure. I'm saying. When it's I a. drove for sure. For sure. Yeah. Hands when down. I drove, for sure. For sure. When I drove for a living, I saw Casey's coming up. I'm like, that's lunch. Like when I when I drove a ro- route, I'd be like, forgot lunch today. I'll stop at that Casey's wherever and I'll get pizza or whatever. And like. I'll take that over a quick trip. Like if I'm pulling in off an exit and I see like a shell, uh, Casey's and a whatever quick mm-hmm, trip, whatever mm-hmm. I'm choosing the Casey's like every time that's kind of the conversation I was trying to have is like, what, mm. what's the place that you see? I'm like, Oh, that's the spot. That's where I'm stopping. And it's not like any of those places are like terribly good. They're just like, no. it's, it's the lesser of whatever evils and whatever. I'll just stop and eat this. Like, but the thing about it is like, I think the, I think the difference is there's something about uh, kind of like the chain thing of like, like I don't eat McDonald's, but mm-hmm. the appeal is if you're somewhere, you know what you're going to get. Sure. Yeah. Like, you sure. know what I'm saying? So I think that's the thing about like I, AM PM does not have that same level. No. Um, in regards of like consistency of expectation. Mm-hmm. Or, or excuse me, expectation of consistency, but it is APM's the the closest thing I can think of in regards of like thinking back, thinking about being back in California for sure. So competitive convenience store chains is a midwestern phenomenon. That's not like uh, you guys didn't like hit up the Casey's because that's where we would go as kids. No. Also, we'd like hit up the Casey's because there's like we know the donuts there are good or whatever. So. Yeah. All right. No. no. Check one in the Midwest column, zero in the West Coast column. But anyway. Well, we we always had like the little, I mean. Well, we had beaches and mountains. And, <laughs> no, and I, I know. Feel, and I feel like, dr- I feel like it's not stores. zero on the West Coast and one in the Midwest. It's it's a lot more. I feel, I feel like Southern California was always about going to like the drugstores in the neighborhood. Like thrifty, especially thrifty. thrifty. When, I, when we were coming well, up, the ice, ice cream. cream. You Bro. get that ice cream in fifties, boy. You get that ice cream. <laughs> it's so oh, good. Man. The little scoop that went. Yeah, oh, it's the little yep. almost square, roundish, squarish. Oh man, fifties ice cream. Yeah, that was the jam. Oh, that yep. was the jam. Yeah, that was the spot to go to. Yeah, and I I feel like that kind of like um, soda fountain, nineteen fifties sort of yeah extension of like the soda mm-hmm. fountain is a very I feel like it's a very Cali thing. Yeah. I mean, I know it existed in other places, but I feel like it's just, it fits California so well, you know? I don't remember seeing too too many of them being a, a Missourian that uh, see too many of them growing up, but there is like, um, there's this weird phenomenon. And after this, we can actually talk about what we came here to talk about, <laughs> but there's this weird phenomenon. Um, my wife is watching a documentary on, Oh, I can't remember. It's some culture. It's some culture. I can't remember exactly what it is, but that got me. Oh, she's talking about Appalachian. She's talking about Appalachian oh, yeah. culture. Okay. So she's watching a documentary about basically about what the the collapse of the coal industry, what did to like West Virginia mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. And then, um, but I have yet to find like a really, really good cultural documentary, whatever about the Ozarks. Because there's this mm. thing about the Ozarks about when you're there and you guys have both been. Um, okay. So mm. uh, it's like this whole thing where suddenly you kind of enter this like time warp thing yes. where suddenly it's like it's stuck kind of like in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And there's a lot of like, oh, I don't know exactly what the right term for it is, but a lot of like 50s, 60s and 70s aesthetic. At least that's the way it was. And even when we went to um, what's that really hip place in Arkansas? Um I can't remember. I'm not going to sit here and try and think about it, but it's like a really touristy spot. It's like, there's like all these old like diners and stuff like that stuck from like the fifties and sixties and seventies. And it's like not hot springs. No, it's Eureka Springs. Eureka Eureka Springs. Springs. Yeah. It's like, there's this element. I remember being a kid there where I'm like, so I was trying to find that documentary trying to explain like what that culture is. And like, is it just like a refuse? Because like, as the further South of Missouri you go, the more evidence starts to become You'll see like old signs, old tractors, like old cars, old trucks and stuff like that. Mm. It's not like the forefront 
it definitely was more when I was a kid. Definitely kind of taking like a step back. I don't know if it's gentrification or whatever, but there's like this whole thing about like, there's this element there. There's like this through line of, you can kind of see when you're looking down a strip of like stores or whatever, saying like Rolla, Missouri or whatever of like, Oh, you can definitely see how this place has not changed its architecture or decor. There's pizza shops. You can walk in in like Rolla, Missouri that are straight out of like the fifties and sixties and seventies. Was that the high point of that region? I think that's the what economic it must high be. point. Same with and there's Missouri. just no more capital. There's no more capital flowing in, but well, some, for some reason at that Missouri time, all the capital flowing. In. Nobody's coming here, but like, well, well, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, it was probably that all of the regional tourism was probably all going there. Sure. And right. That was the place yeah. to go. And so there must have been some kind of boom because also a lot of our government buildings are from that time. So, like, when you go, mm-hmm. not again, not so much in Kansas City. But going to other towns, if you go to government buildings, it's all like the same architecture. It's kind of the same like um, like marble floor, kind of like the the generation after Art Deco style. And there's like the rock everywhere. It's just like okay, this question, awesome- question, because this happened in California, too. OK. And it's, and it's an interesting phenomenon. Are these places that you are describing, how close are they to the largest freeway? Not, not like, are they right on the freeway? Can you no. see them? For, do, okay. See, cause that's the key. I will guarantee you that if you look and you look at before the freeway, that all of those places in the 50s, 60s and 70s were on the main highway that you needed to get through the region. Mm-hmm. But when they built the freeway, they built it away from that. So you actually had to go off the freeway and onto it. And that's why there's no capital. The same oh. thing is you can drive route 66 in California, yeah. and you will see like ruins that are ruins of buildings from the 50s and 60s. Because when they built the highway and the, the, the freeways in the 70s, they built it away from Route 66. So no one took Route 66 anymore. So you'll see all these motels and old diners. You'll see ruins of gas stations, all of this stuff. Right. And it's just because that used to be the tourists that you used to have to take that highway to get through. And that, and now there's no capital that fl- floated in there because no, nobody passed through anymore. Huh. And I wonder if that's like part of this like target on like um like genuinely like soul built things, you know? Because mm-hmm. there's like a difference between like anything built from like the 1980s and before. There's like mm-hmm. soul to it because you could tell like each brick was laid by hand, whatever, 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 and it still do that of course but it's not like prefab and stuff like that Mm -hmm. i wonder if like this whole like um there's a discussion for another time it's a discussion for another time so anyway it's so hold on one second sorry okay so um we had agreed on gonna do a q a episode right and um our uh wonderful assistant has gathered some questions in in our group chat I'm sorry to do this live on the air, but that's what it is. There is a question that needs some context that would might be inappropriate to read on the air. So while I vamp for a second, if you guys could check the group chat, just one There's second. A... And I sent a message. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Just the bottom part, just the bottom page. The bottom page. Yeah. Which, well, but what is it referring to? It's referring oh, to I, the question to, la- to the last question. Yeah, and so it says I wouldn't read this part, but we'll read that. So what? don't, but don't What's read wrong? it aloud. I was, What's I should have had this. Mm. Okay. I mean, we don't have to read the person's name. No, we don't, and we're not gonna. So but, I don't. What's 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 I don't, I don't understand. What's wrong with the question? Hey, Cyprian, you know sometimes you just have to do things in, <laughs> and not get them. Uh, you just you just do it. So anyway, the the person, our assistant, wrote, "I wouldn't read this on the air." So I said, "Well, we're not going to read this on the air." So hold on. Anyway, I'm trying to let me to regale you guys a story about when I went to Casey's as a young child and bought me some donuts while the other members of my. I, I mean, that seems it does. It's what what I don't understand. What would be like? What's inappropriate I think... about? I, don't I think the JPEG for this episode should be your face right there. 
<laughs> and just like looking extraordinarily confused. No biggie. I just, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just, okay. We'll just roll with it. So, hold on. um, hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm holding. I mean, I, I think there's something missing here, Andrew. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay, she's saying she included another quote to say don't read this part. That's that's what I'm saying. Oh. So I was saying so let's, will... yeah, so I don't yeah, so just read the first part. I <laughs> like, know. That's what I didn't understand. We're like, oh, I this know. is why you do production, buddy. <laughs> I honestly okay, now I completely get forgot about that part until we were getting ready to do this, and then I screenshot it at part at the end. And sent it to you guys and said, okay, all right. I, I understand. Well, and then this? I was going to tell. How about, this? how about this? Why don't you do another question besides that one? And we can get rolling and then come back to that one. Just slip it in. You know? Oh, yeah. There you go. Then we don't know. Do. Then we don't, don't know which thing. one it is. Black okay. flag style. I was just going right, to slip it go. in. Perfect. But, okay. Okay. So our first question comes from Anonymous. Okay. Let's do actually. Let's do one from Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. What is the royal path when it comes to being more feminine as a woman or masculine as a man? Asking as a married woman has been something that keeps popping up on my YouTube. There's actually a female Orthodox YouTuber that covers the feminine topic. While some of the some of what they talk about seems helpful, I have the gut feeling that it falls into an extreme. We'd love to hear your thoughts and anything you know that the church teaches on this topic. Also, one more random question. What do y'all think of Henry Mac or Harry Mack? I got to hear y'all's take. I mean, he is just unreal. Um, so I don't know who that is. First off, I don't know who Harry, Harry Mack. Mac. So, know. so that's our take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm assuming, I'm assuming some kind of Mac that's Harry, but Father. Oh, he's a freestyle rapper. Yeah, I don't know. And um, he's uh younger than me, so I probably have not heard of him before. Yeah. But Zoe, I'm very sorry. We're old and we we've been entrenched in music for a long time that we've been listening to. So I mean, I mean I've just never I, I mean, I'm a hip hop head, but I have never, ever been into freestyle rappers. Yeah, I mean, I it's interesting. I either, it's actually. interesting that you could come up with rhymes on the fly. You know what I mean? But, but I don't believe that it's on the fly. It's I it's think- not. It's, it's so rehearsed. It's yeah, it's, it's not. You've got to you've got to, like I would rather hear you like write a song like I would yeah. rather hear the the song. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather hear your songwriting capability. Yeah. I mean, OK, how about this real quick? Who do you think has the best flow? Nothing's written in cement. I mean, Just... this is let's get to the question, because I, okay. I don't because I just, just... want to say I like cool Keith's flow. It's That's just, all I wanted to say. Yeah, Doctor I mean, o- Octagon's flow is pretty tight. Anyway, you know, I, father, I, feminine. What what's what's going on with feminine? I mean, I, I think the question. So let me approach it one way, which to throw people off the scent a little bit is, I think there is a bit of a social construct that's woven into that question, because. The definition of like how someone would define it, and even in regards of, I don't know who I don't know who's always talking about in regards of the other YouTube personality, but, um, I mean there there are these things that are particular to our time which seem like they are, you know, inherently not feminine, which I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. You know, Um, and the reason why I'm saying I think the question's off is, you know, feminine is to receive, masculine is to is to give. Mm. So if you if you under if you understand that, then I think I think that's what's helpful because the parameters by which the church judges these things. And I, and I mean the church, not necessarily like an individual or a, a community or whatever, um, are are much more of a spiritual anthropological kind of like I use that term in a bigger framework, 
right? It has to ha- it has to do with what it means to be a human versus how we're kind of defining feminine in the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but there are some core things. And I think like a core thing is to be feminine is to receive, to be masculine is to give. And so some people are probably like, what the heck are you talking about? It's just, it's nature. It's nature. Um, plants, animals, <laughs> You know, the feminine receives the seed, right? And the male gives the seed. It's also the the secret to cracking the code of why women can't be priests, you know? It has everything to do with receiving and giving. Um, so I don't know if that answer is always question, but I think it's a good... I, I think, could you expand on that a little bit, Father, about the why women can't be priests? Yeah, so... There's all the kind of um, reasons that people give back and forth. Um, not that they're wrong or bad, but, you know, like um, like when someone says, women well, can't be a priest because, um, you know, Christ came as a man and all his closest, um, you know, disciples and apostles were men. And that's, that's a true and good answer, but it, it's not at the core of the thing. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the issue is not so much, oh, well, because Christ came, came as a man, which he did. But why is that? What is that revealing to us? You know what I mean? Because you can flip it on its head and you can see how, for instance, the myrrh-bearing women actually became more masculine and became the apostles to the apostles because they're the ones who were first going to the tomb. They're the ones who first brave. They they displayed all these quote unquote masculine virtues, braving the night, you know, braving being discovered by soldiers, you know, all the things that they did. And on top of that, they're the ones who brought to the apostles who were hiding, cowering like women, cowering because of fear, and brought them the good news that Christ was risen. Mm. So they became the apostles to the apostles, right? Mm. And in, in all our hymnography, there is this inversion, which it's a chiasm where the masculine is revealed in the feminine, the feminine, the masculine, right? Um, if you want to read more about it, although it's not, I'm not saying one for one with him, but he gives a great insight to it is um, there's the book um, Ethics of Beauty by Dr. Timothy Patitsis, where it kind of gives a great insight into this but it isn't just him it's not like his kind of pet theory but it's it's in the hymnography if you read the hymnography of the church it talks about certain you know female saints saint mary of egypt saint theodora on and on about their their manliness and disdaining their 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 feminine weakness right that's that's a whole thing um and to kind of give props to Dr. Timothy like, or to make that connection. You know, he talks about this, you know, the mother of God who, like, who is this incredible image of strength and, you know, the the, the almost um, she's profound in her silence. You know, her preaching in this, this the mother of God, the strong, silent type, right, which is usually associated with being masculine, right? Here is Christ, who is this incredible uh, expression and image of, of nurturing, you know? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I, I I wish to gather you like a mother hand gathers her chicks, but you would not come to me, right? This is Christ speaking. So this nurturing that Christ manifests and embodies, which is so oftentimes associated with being feminine, so if we're going by those parameters that I, that I think Zoe's talking about, then we have this complete confusion upon us. But when you understand that, this is why I'm saying you got to go to, you got to look at the question differently. You go to the core of it. It begins to un, not only undo the confusion, but the play on the need, the play on the mask and the feminine and the one being complimentary and, and revelatory of the other begins to really get you to the heart of the thing. So all that being said, you know, um, 
the generative principle, you know, like this is another thing. Our Trinitarian, the the or the, the well, the Christian doctrine of the Trinity is that the Father is the source, right? Um, the Son is begotten, and the Spirit proceeds from the Father, who is the source, right? So they're all equal, you know, in essence, you know, undivided, but but they're different persons, right? But the Father is the progenitor. The Father is the source. Mm. So that principle is what's imbued to man in regards of the bearing of the image and the manifestation of, of that. Um, and so women are not that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And women have another aspect. One of the areas where it's it's not hard and fast, and so I don't want someone like sending, well, I mean, you can if you want, I don't care. But it's not like, oh, Dr. Timothy Petitsis, Father Turbo, disagree with you. It, it's not that. I'm just saying, if you read what he's saying in that in his book, you could feel as if he's saying it isn't sufficient enough when people um, speak of, of the complementary nature of gender, of sex. Um, and maybe that is what he's saying. I, I don't want to necessarily take the time and do a whole like review and kind of uh, exposit on that. But I just know that that's a thing for some people. And he's presenting this chiasm as like a third option. But I, I have a problem with that because I think the complementary nature of male and female, as I'm trying to put it out, is actually incredibly valid. And not just as like, oh, it's a nice, you know, kind of like midway point of trying to reconcile. No, I, I, think, it, I think there is a divine... Uh, intention and expression in the complementary nature of male and female on top of this chiastic revelation of, you know, the one kind of revealing the other. So all that to be said, it's, it's a lot deeper and it's one of the things that this whole um, female priesthood, if once you get this and understand this, <clears throat> excuse me, you can begin to understand how these people are, you know, um, un unwilling, you know, I say this to be charitable to them, unwilling, uh, unwittingly um, agents of Antichrist who are sympathetic to this whole thing of like female priesthood and this thing. Because it goes beyond just kind of like a liberal approach. It goes beyond, quote unquote, you know, egalitarianism. It goes beyond all that. It actually goes into the very nature of the demonic rebellion against God. If you if you basically rebel against nature on this level that we're talking about, rebel, rebelling against nature is a primary articulation of the rebellion against God. Once you understand that, then then so many of these issues become much more clear. And it's funny because one of the big things in this other woman, um, this uh, this reporter, this reporter who who goes into the guise of being a quote unquote anthropologist who just she puts out salacious garbage. Um, she she's a great example of this in regards of these people. I don't even know how or why they would find themselves in 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 the annals of the church, but they are not they're not children of the church. Because of their fundamentally disordered and demonic stance. And, and the thing is, she'll use, and these people like that, they'll use, or even people who talk about feminism and orthodoxy, blah, blah. It's like they'll use certain terms and they'll try to um, marginalize the term demonic. They'll say, oh, you're, that's a fundamentalist thing. And then, you know what I'm saying? But they don't understand what that really means. What it, what it means to be demonic and getting into things of disorder and ultimately like rebellion against God. And so that's why the movement, of course, with transgenderism, which is the logical um, next step from um, homosexuality as an accepted approach. Transgenderism is the next <clears throat> step. It's very much like a combination if you throw a left, you have to follow up with the right. And then, you know, if you want to knock someone out because marriage, um, the undermining of marriage has so much more to do with just like the social fabric of quote unquote, 
Western Judeo Christian culture. It goes beyond that. It goes to the very fabric of reality. Yeah. Right. It goes to the very fabric. And it's, and it's fundamentally demonic in its approach because again, this, this thing of it's the articulation of this rebellion against God because, you know, marriage is at the beginning, the middle and the end of the, the economy of God's salvation. Yeah. The Garden of Eden, marriage, the prophets, marriage and the broken uh, covenant of marriage christ he inaugurates his ministry where doing what uh, a wedding the wedding, wedding. Canaan, right yeah. how does everything end the wedding of the wedding supper of the lamb it's not a mistake and it is an evolutionary theology what i mean by evolutionary theology evolutionary theology is when someone says these things are all happenstance it's all accidents random chance and it's just used these events like marriage and gender, all these things, they're just used to kind of explain something, but they're not really pointing to like a cause, right? It's just oh. this thing just kind of happened, right? Never they, heard they that me I, do you see why, how I'm using that term though? Well, that yeah. that that seems like all of this. What what I'm it's it's crazy because I'm now seeing I'm seeing an interesting link between all of them, like the idea that women could be in the priesthood and transgenderism and all of these things is like basically and and to what you just said father the core thing that you have to do the tactic that you have to do fundamentally is that you have to say fatherhood and by extension motherhood or complementary to it motherhood are yeah. social constructs okay. and not objective reality correct because if you just simply say well fatherhood and motherhood are objective reality well, then all the rest of it, then you don't, it, then it's like, well, why can't women be priests? And it's like, well, because fatherhood is an objective reality. It's not mm -hmm. a social construct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like a woman can't be a father mm -hmm. and a priest is, and a priest is a father. And so, so you, can't, then and you so, can't do it. And so let's, how else do we get to undermine these underpinnings of, of reality? Mm -hmm. Right? Like we have to go so far away, go like around, long way around transgenderism. It, it is so obvious a um, Trojan horse and strike to the core thing. Yeah. It's, it's you know, pandemic, whatever. I'll, I'll stand by it. I, I, I don't know. I don't care. Um, at this point. At this, at this point, point I, I maintain <laughs> it really, the, S, the, the main target was the Eucharist. I maintain it. Oh, <laughs> I maintain yeah, it. Without a doubt. The trans, the, and transgenderism, um, sexual, uh, the sexual revolution, all these things are really trying to get around to the undermining of the priesthood. You have to, in order to undermine, to unhinge, if it's possible, if it was possible to unhinge man from Christ, you have to undermine the, the very means by which Christ comes to man, which is primarily, number one, the Eucharist, and you can't have a Eucharistic, uh, you can't have a Eucharistic liturgy. You can't have the Eucharist without a priesthood. So even even the Reformation, right? The problem we have is we look at these things, and and people like this woman. I'm giving her too much airtime, but she's just this great, um, you know, um, grammar worm tongue kind of like figure, where it's it's always trying to whisper and undermine the ability and the potential for orthodox christians um for catholics lowercase c to really garner the discernment that's needed right because they say like oh like with this whole thing about something's conspiracy and like you know, whether it's gender all these things it's like no 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 these people are just fundamentalists they're this they're this but what they don't what people don't understand is and this kind of gets back to something i was saying weeks ago about our presuppositions are so far gone like at some point in time, we began to to like give give way to certain presuppositions, which are very problematic. And it's the same thing here. We look at the Protestant Reformation as an accident of history. Is it? Is it? Right. This gets us into. I know it's like whoa, Father Turbo. I know I'm going way over here in regards of like it feels like I'm I'm reaching, but it's not. Because Ephesians six twelve. Ephesians six twelve. Ephesians six twelve. Hey, and, just for our audience. And, and, What's Ephesians six twelve? You know, just for our audience, you know, like not for anyone on this particular. Here, I'll look it up real quick. Hold on one second. Keep going. And on. also, and also Ephesians four, one body, yes. one baptism, one spirit. 
mm. right? And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. So this reality is very important because as the fathers teach, and not just like contemporary elders, right? As this is another thing that people like this woman are attacking, right? The movement of academic theology, the movement of these secularists who are trying to undermine the church. And they say like, oh, you know, contemporary elders are just, you know, elderism and all these things that they say, which is absurd. They're all there to undermine the reality. But I, I digress because St. John Damascus, St. Peter Damascus, St. Um, uh, Evagoras, the solitary, we can go on on. What I'm about to say is the all the virtues are linked together, just like the vices. <clears throat> so when you try to separate these things and you try to silo them, that's part of the approach to really confuse and to unhinge the faithful from the strength of the 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 connective tissue of doctrine, dogma, and praxis, right? Because all of those things need to be connected together to really discern what's happening. But this gets all the way back to saying, Father, I hate to I hate to interrupt please. you. I just don't want you to go past uh, saying about the virtues being connected because I remember that there was some question that was brought up maybe a dozen episodes back about a comment that you had no i think i don't maybe it was with father peter hears when he was on where you had made and it was in passing but i think it got glossed over where there was something about if you see somebody who's struggling with lust or i think it was in the context of pornography you're also seeing somebody who's not fasting and mm -hmm. i think that there was some question to somebody who was like wait but fasting is not about and and, and i think that it was more a, this question of the virtues being li linked together mm -hmm. right and the passions mm -hmm. being linked together that it's like if you see this one thing because you were saying well if i'm seeing this i can almost guarantee mm -hmm. that i'm also seeing Correct. This over here, right? Because yeah. there, because there isn't a separation between Correct. them. Correct. Correct. And it's just like we were talking earlier. Um, I'm having a problem with my lower back, but it's really my glute, my glutes and my hamstrings, yeah. right? Which feel fine, right? But really, the tightness is what's pulling on my lower back. So when you understand that, right? And and it's one interestingly enough, getting back to the why you need to really dismantle the priesthood. You have to dismantle the priesthood. Because without the priesthood, there's no Eucharist. Without the priesthood, there's no, there's no physicians to do this, to say like, oh, no, no, this problem right here is actually this. So, for instance, this is why evangelicals, you know, and, and really this gets us to this whole thing with baptism. That's why baptism is being attacked, because baptism is a fundamental link of the chain. And so if you, if you get around baptism... And you start trying to say like, no, no, no. And what happens is, is you begin to, they don't, people don't realize this, but the attack on baptism is not only just an attack on ecclesiology, it's, a, it's an attack on the grace of God. Because that, that initial grace, baptism is regenerative. Let me tell you something. If someone says like, hey, you know, I was baptized, whatever. It's like, okay, listen, evangelicals don't believe that it's regenerative. <laughs> they just don't. And it, and it doesn't even matter if you're baptized, quote unquote, three times in the name of the Trinity. If someone doesn't believe it's regenerative, what do you do with that? It's what you know is saying? It an outward sign of an inward It's an outward sign of, an inward, of yeah. an inward working. Now, here's the thing. Okay, God can do whatever. So like D Dismas, the thief on the cross, St. Procopius, you know, who he's got a crazy story. Christ came and baptized him himself, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, re I read that and I was like, whoa, that one, there's two of them, actually, there's the two jesters. I know there's really two of them who, you know, they're mocking baptism and they do it. And then so, OK, great. Those are exceptions which prove the rule, yeah. which prove the rule. Right. So I know everyone's like, OK, we were talking about feminism and the masculine, and the feminine, how we get over here. Well, how we got over here is this. If you don't understand that knowing what it means to be actually a Christian and how that starts off with baptism and that's linked with, you know, chrismation, that's linked with the Eucharist and all those things can't happen unless you have a priesthood. And if you don't have a priesthood, then you don't understand what it means to actually be human in connection, perceiving and pursuing God, perceiving rightly, seeing, understanding and then pursuing God. You can't do it. Right. And if you don't have that, 
then of course you're not going to have a proper understanding of what it means to be male and female. And that goes to both extremes, Yeah. right? And so this is why it's all tied together because this rebellion against God, which is, which is articulated in the confusion of nature. Yeah. Right. This is, this is getting, this is what I'm saying. It's a great question, but really like, let's get underneath what's really happening there and kind of like. Father, you've talked about a good marriage is like a man and a woman facing Christ rather than facing each other. Correct. 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 Like they're really the only way to understand male and female is to face Christ. And with Christ, you have to accept certain things. One, that the virtues and the vices are all connected. You, you, and if you break that chain, I have found, I've seen it happen, unfortunately, with people, Orthodox people who have took certain stances on certain things, and that chain is clearly broken, you, then um, the only judge you have then is you. You're, everything is left to your ultimate, this is good or this is bad, because you're ignoring something over here. And because of that, igno- because of you ignoring, you're no longer facing Christ. You're okay. facing away. So then the only, you don't have anything to look to other than how do I feel? And then, okay. then that's how you end up with stances like, well, I know gay, being gay is a sin, but they're not really hurting anyone. Right. But like, and, well, who's, and who's influencing how you feel? Like if you're well, not pointing toward Christ, I mean, it's not the, coming, it's not generated from inside of you. Psalm, it's coming from the demonic. Psalm right. 90, those who take refuge in God, like God will take care of you. Like a, 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 a pestilence will not reach your door. Like I know I'm misquoting it, but it's all nice. Like for those who wholly take refuge in God, God's got you. Like he'll, he'll like in like, you know. Yeah, but forgive me. You're, you're totally correct. I just, I'm going in this, not to like, I want to take where you're going and run with it a little bit. Cause I want to go deeper again in the same way with Zoe's question. I want to go a little bit deeper because when you begin to understand that it's really, it begins to circumscribe your horizons in a way that is detrimental. What? Here's what I mean. When you read, which none of you probably should or whatever, but when you read in like the Philokalia and the Neptic Fathers, it talks about like, don't pair with images and shapes and forms and all this and that. What begins to happen is because you begin to, it isn't talking about icons per se. It, it's talking about the mental image. And, and this what happens is as you begin to circumscribe the divine, meaning like you begin to fit it and shape it into something that fits your narrative, you begin to limit the ability to opt to perceive God. And if when yeah. you limit the, the ability to perceive God, you limit your ability to now receive God and, and to pursue God. You see what I'm uh, saying? Because it becomes it becomes idolatry on a whole another level last thing i'll say don't lose it and idolatry is given to us by the demons the demons saint isaac the syrian by the way you got to be able to know uh the elders and the contemporary saints if you want to get to the ancients right right? so another thing that's connected correct because it's connected yeah because it's connected right saint isaac the syrian the demons have keen intelligence The angels have keen intelligence, but the angels have light and the demons have no light. Thus, they have darkness. Why does this matter to what we're talking about? Because the limit, the limiting of your ability to apprehend God, the the cutting off of horizon, that is the fruit of darkness. So you can feel as if you're perceiving something. And that's what happens to a lot of these academic theologians. They read something in a book. They don't understand it. They have no praxis. But that but that keenness of intelligence, which can be bestowed by the demonic and only keenness of intelligence, is thus snuck in under the guise of like, I'm understanding hubris, essentially. But it's darkness. And so what happens is a limiting a perspective. And thus, you're not really seeing God. You're cut off. And all that you're perceiving as God is the light of your own intelligence. Right. This is why you have people who will say, I'm an Orthodox Christian, but I'm all for transgender rights. I'm all for this or that, because the limiting of their ability to define what is something is contingent upon how they feel. And they mistake feeling for an actual expression of love. 
So I think that's my question. Would it be fair to say that when that, what you just described, takes place, they are then using the wrong, like, quote unquote, organ to perceive God? They're not using their noose anymore. They're using, like, their imagination or their, like, their heart, like, quote unquote. Do you know what I mean? Not their heart. Not, like, yeah, yeah. We got to be careful, though. We got to be careful, though. But, like, because we got to say, not the heart, because that's the problem is they're 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 actually so far from their heart in the sense of where it needs to be. I, I it's see the what intellect. You're they're using their intellect. Yeah, they're using their rational mind. The the okay. the, the the rational mind in a in a um autonomous way. So again, like I said, excuse me, like Saint Isaac says, which I was referring to, the demons have keen intellect, but darkness. The angels have keen intellect, but light. Because right? of a lack of connection on the part of the demons. The angels are connected to God and the demons are not. They've broken the chain. Ding, ding, ding. And interestingly enough, the angels are connected to each other because the angels receive their, yeah. they receive their illumination from the ones above them. That's why hierarchy is totally a thing. That's why Protestantism is of the devil. That, like, that dismantling I know people are like, what? what? Listen, I am an Orthodox Christian in spite of being a Protestant. Right. It's it's God's mercy and his grace. It's like my spiritual father said, you know, when I first came into the church, he was a he was a Baptist minister for like 20 years. He's like the Baptist introduced me to Jesus and Jesus introduced me to his church. Right. Huh, so, so on that I end, love that. it's great. Yeah. So on that end, it's like, OK, that's great. But like when we're talking about a system, not people, but when we're talking about a system. It, 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 it's in spite of those things. Because it's fundamentally, it's, it's inherent to it to cut one off in the way that the fathers describe the ability to perceive and, and encounter God. Are you following me? And all that plays into the, uh, the ability to understand reality, which, in, which includes what is feminine, what is male, you know, um, what's the purpose of sex, what's the purpose of marriage, right? What's the purpose of church? That's why so many Protestants, they end up evangelicals end up it's like this is a very common thing i've seen so when encounters orthodoxy they encounter even just becoming catholic small c and depending on how they respond to it a lot of times if they don't well not a lot of times eventually if they don't listen they end up just not going to church anymore yeah Why? because they don't need to because they don't need to because hierarchy because you know sacramental reality all those things are just they don't matter you know what I mean? It, it doesn't. It, there's, there's no incarnation. No, it's not incarnation. There's, there's no framework. It's all ideological. It's all emotional. You know what I mean? It's all these different frameworks that function in a you know kind of very consumeristic context of like, yeah, I go to church. It gives me a sense of being a good citizen, a good guy. It gives me a good moral foundation by which I can you know try to like not do bad things which is i'm not saying it's bad but that is not salvation you know what i mean so that's all like this, humanitarianism that's like and, being and all this yeah and all this plays into the fundamentals of f- feminine masculine what it is right that's why that's why when someone becomes orthodox some people can be like oh you're so arrogant but what it is is people are so uncomfortable with Someone saying that there's actually objective truth, right? And that's why they perceive it that way. And that's also why people can't tolerate us saying, no, this is what a woman is. This is what a man is. This is what marriage is. This is who Christ is. Like those, that authoritative um, grace that the church holds because Christ bestows it upon her and upon her members that's the thing. And it's not about how you say it because Muslims can talk in an authoritative way, but speaking authoritatively and using certain, um, you know, tactics of a, of a keen rhetorician, that's not the same thing as actually having authority. No, yeah. It's different. You know I mean? it feels, well, and you can tell what... the difference between somebody who's just saying the words in an authoritative way and mm-hmm. someone who is communicating to you their, their, 
their experience, not just what they believe, but what they know because they've experienced the thing. And, and, and they're experience. just like, yeah, no, that's not that's not right. it. I've actually experienced the thing. I'm sorry. Right. Like what you're describing. That's right. No offense to you, but that's actually just not reality. That's right. and, and that experience and the difference is because people have experiences outside of our tradition. Sure. But our experiences become ratified and, and energized as they line up with the tradition of the church with the life of Christ. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, mm-hmm. it gives it right. Because it isn't it isn't just experience. It is the experience that lines up with reality. Right. Yeah. Some that's someone, that's when you're cooking with gas. Someone I love was pervert uh, was converting from Protestantism to Orthodoxy, and they said, "Well, what about the spiritual experiences I've had so far? Are those all just going to fall by the wayside?" And I was like, "Well, give it time. Uh, they'll either be ratified or they will fall." Because that's what happened to me. Like I was pretty heavily into hallucinogenics before orthodoxy. I had to get rid of about 90% of that, those experiences. But there was a 10% that has so far been ratified by the church has been like, you know, given like the, no, this was, this was from God. You experienced And, and why And why wouldn't there be? Right. No, like, yeah, why, because, it's reality because it's reality. So of course you've experienced reality, you know, like, so, why wouldn't it be? I, this is great. And the, the last thing I want to say on this topic is Father Cosmos um, on Orthodox talked about uh, Orthodox talks talked about he's talking about marriage, the series on marriage. And he talked about a woman who was huge, like very strong. She's a field worker and her husband was small, kind of shrimpy, but she was completely submissive to him. Mm-hmm. Like like he there was an argument and she picked up one of the other field workers and like, like threw him like that. And he like like landed over there. But then when her husband came, she folded her hands and listened to what he was saying very kindly, very lovingly. So, you know, that's kind of an icon of like, you know, you would say like, oh, we won't get into that now. But anyway, that's kind of a little micro icon of like what that is, like what that can be. So uh, here's the first question from the list. Uh, This is from Anonymous. Within our parish and also outside our parish, I've seen many men come to the Orthodox faith and this Orthodox faith, and this has caused their wives who are either Protestant, Catholic, or other to start manifesting very strange and antagonistic behavior towards their husbands and against Orthodoxy. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, for real. My question is, have you also found this to be the case? Yes. If so, what do you think is going on? It's the devil. Has modern feminism invited <laughs> you or given and or given right in our society? This was easy. <laughs> for women who participate in it to be given over to this unique form of Where's madness. Dana Carvey? <laughs> <laughs> and then Satan? what do you think? Pull it up. Satan? <laughs> the last the one is lady. <laughs> what do you think is a good way to combat it specifically prayer and what works against it so yeah absolutely. well it's the devil it's the devil yeah so devil. take it from there <laughs> yeah yeah that was my well, experience at first my wife was very antagonistic towards orthodox now low-key yeah. she's a much better christian than i am like she's she it's i have found that to be pretty common too men go gung-ho and the women are kind of reserved. And then at about a year and a half, two years in, men have burned themselves out because they're treating this like some kind of boot camp. And then the women are the one who kind of carry them for the next couple of years. Yep. 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 It's a very, that's a, it's, it's so common of a trope that it's, you know, it's true. Practically um, a meme. Yeah. It's practically a meme. The only thing I would say is understand that it's very common. You're not the only one. And the biggest thing is to um, just allow repentance to, to take a hold of you. And, you know, you become, you work on becoming um, a better husband. And that better husband, by the, this is where I think, this is where I think any commentary I can give will be helpful. Because that other part about becoming the best husband you can, that's, that hopefully should be a given. You know what I mean? And actually being a Christian and actually practicing the thing. The trick is, I've observed this. There's this whole thing, and it's only gotten worse. There's this whole thing where the husband and the desire to want to be the better husband begins to lose the essence of his being a husband. Yeah. 
And, Ooh, I know exactly what you're saying there. Yeah. And that's a big mistake, my friend. That's a big mistake. You don't want to fall into the mistake of, oh, just whatever she says and whatever experts she pulls up and throws at me, I'll go with that because I've been such a, you know, toxic jerk that all of a sudden now you have to, you know, swallow a different kind of lie. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Because kind of getting on what we were talking about earlier, if you're in that situation, whoever your wife is going to provide outside of Christ in the church to give an example of like what it means to be a man is not going to be good. So the best thing to understand is like, let me just kind of give a little lay of the land. Um, you know, the authority that God gives a man over, over his wife has been abused. It has. Yes. And that, that abuse is exactly the kind of almost trigger to, to bring about an even stronger reaction. Yeah. Right. Um, same thing with racism, all that stuff, right? That's the thing is the kernel of truth that causes these reactions it's there, but then the response is almost sometimes worse. You see what I'm saying? So in the same sense, you know, these abuses have occurred and all this stuff, but it gets you to the point where it's not even throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Now it becomes just something distorted, sick, and demonic. And you don't want to fall into that trap. So the best thing to do is to understand that, you know, what does it mean to be a, uh, what does it mean? What does it mean to be a husband? Well, What's the etymology of that? Well, what's a husband? The husbandman. He's the one who tends the garden, right? He's the one who, if a, if a man, if a husband is tending the garden, the husbandman's tending the garden, tending the vineyard, right? He's making sure that the, gar- the vineyard is weeded. He's making sure that no pests are there. He's making sure that there's proper soil and sunlight and all the stuff that the vineyard or the garden needs to grow. Man is the husband who plants the seed, sows the seed. Woman is the gardener, the vineyard that receives the seed and brings forth fruit, mm. right? <laughs> I mean, that's that's the pattern of reality, right? Yeah. So anything to be like, oh, I've been so terrible. And like, now I need to actually kind of invert myself and take on a, you know, more feminine approach. I think that's actually, first of all, that's not going to help. And second of all, your wife has been, you know, beguiled and lied to like, like so many women. Um, And I'm not saying this person's wife, I'm saying in general, like, you know, random example person I'm talking to. And so you have to, you have to do the thing that a husband needs to do, which is to be a covering for her, to pray for her, to weed for her, you know, to 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 see that, oh, um, this thing which is unhealthy is there. But you have to be careful to not just like rip it up carelessly because you might rip up good, might rip up a good seed and good soil. And you know what I mean? Sure. You have to be attentive and you have to be circumspect in how you go about weeding these things. Because if you go weeding it recklessly and carelessly just because you want to hurry up and get out of the hot sun so you can go and have a beer that's part of the problem, right? You have to, in the same way that Christ- oh, That's a good did, metaphor. That's great yeah. imagery right there. You know what I mean? That's powerful. Yeah. And, in the same way that Christ is patient and nurturing and tender and all the time being firm, that's what it means to be a husband. That's what it means to be a man. So right? and it's very interesting because when you said, when you began this, like, talking about this, the very first thing that I thought of was- not acting in a husband as though like you begin to start like fasting and praying and stuff all the time, you know, like to the point where it becomes unhealthy. Well, yeah, sure. And I'm glad that you went the direction that you did, because that's actually not a really a perspective I had heard before of like immediately, like kind of like in the sake of, for the sake of like some kind of like, I I don't know, like distorted love or something becoming like super like submissive and like, you you know what I mean? Like kind of what you're saying, father, I, that's just very interesting. I hadn't thought of it that from that, because that was not my mistake. My mistake was, but but they're two sides of the same coin though, really? No, 100%. One, one is neglect and the other is a kind of a weird, like 
it's not I, really neglect, but it's a a a, a wrong disorder. It's, it's like fit. It's disorder. It's a, it's right? a disorder. Yeah, it's disorder. Yeah, and it's like, who is this really for? You know, like, who? What is all this like, quote unquote, praxis and asceticism? Like, what is? Who is this for? It's not for God, and it's certainly not for your wife. You're you're like you're. I don't know. You're treating the like you're treating this whole thing improperly. And like that was kind of my thing. And like I watched a movie a long, long time ago called A Case for Christ. And when I remember, it was a pretty good movie. It's been about a decade since I've seen it. But like one of the things that he said, it was a reporter, a journalist whose wife had converted to Christianity, not orthodoxy, just Protestantism. And it annoyed him to no end. And so he basically like she started like leaving tracks out like in open like bible verses on like the kitchen table and he would walk by and she's clearly like intending for him to see it and stuff like that and he said it annoyed him to no end and like i always heard that like that was kind of like i want to point to this but i don't remember what it is now i lost anyway that i just it was interesting that father brought that up because i had i thought he was going the other direction of like you begin neglecting your wife for the sake of like some kind of vainglorious asceticism or something like that of being like you start ignoring your husbandly responsibilities so that you can go, you know, whatever, do like three hours of like an all night vigil or something like that, even though the whole time you're in pre lest or whatever. So that yeah, I just want to say that was interesting. I didn't know. That I that mean, was- almost almost without exception. I mean, I know there are exceptions, but again, it's one of those things where the exception proves the rule. Like if a man is being a husband, in other words, that he that he is like working hard to lead in terms of what's going on his wife the, his wife would prefer to follow him yeah like in in 99 point even if she's like and you give the example of even if she's super tough even if she's outwardly in the things that she does you know what i mean even if she's a power lifter you know what i mean it's it, there's something in her core I, I mean if she's if she's a woman and especially if she's a mother Right. That's going to make her feel comfortable if she feels like, yes, that 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 covering he's putting that covering there. The garden can like the garden can grow. She's just going to want that. There's isn't not there, even, you know, it's, it's isn't like, again, objective reality. Isn't there like a saint father that says, like, when a woman has to take a man's responsibility, she ends up hating him or something like that? I mean, I don't know if it's a saying, if, but if it's, there's it's not, true. that's reality. though. It's true. I mean, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll, give, I'll just give you an example. Like, first of all, here's one thing. Just throw this out there. Women are often lied to because the devil hates women. The yeah. world hates women. The devil's yeah. always hated women. Um, and the devil lies to women. And one of the biggest lies that the devil wants to put against women is to turn women against the church to have women think that the church is against women. Right. So that's the first thing. But was it not the church who liberated you, my daughters? Was it not the church who brought you out of the shadows and gave you personhood? It was. So anyways, um, I would say this, you know, this is really important to get a hold of because women, not just because of feminism and modernity, but because of the curse of Eve, are tempted to want to rule over their husbands. Now, the interesting thing is, just like anyone, just like any other passion, is that this temptation afflicts all women, and it's only in the repentance of that that they find any cessation of that discomfort. Yeah. Right? Um, it's the same thing for men, right? Men don't want to work. Right. And we'll do go to great lengths to avoid work. But it's only in working that the cessation of that thing that is paining them is is dealt with. I will give you the great example, the African-American community. It's it is the example. The devil has African-Americans by the hoo hoo. Mm -hmm. Like and you see it in the way that, of course, go ahead, everyone get mad at me, whatever. But that stereotype, which there's an obvious nugget of truth there, right, of the, you know, hyper angry, unsatisfied black woman who's it's evidenced by her being incredibly obese, incredibly like, you know, don't need no man, don't need no man, I don't need no man, all those things, right, power broker, blah, 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 all that stuff. 
that's what I'm talking about in regards of f- believing a lie. Um, and, and, you know, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of um, historical context and spiritual context there, all demonically motivated, you know what I mean? Socialism, communism, all those things motivating the undermining of the economic and uh, social kind of like clarity that African Americans had at one point in time, right? But seeing the fruit of that in, in this reality, right, this distortion there, and the only way for the African American woman as a kind of generalized thing, as we're talking about here, to find relief from that is repentance by returning back to the original order that God has ordained. Same thing with the quote unquote African American man in regards to these kind of like broader stereotyping narratives, right? Because obviously that's not the case for everybody, whatever. But the the reality of, you know, and here's the thing, let me just say this real quick because I, I, I'm hoping somebody's getting angry because I'm hoping that there's people that watch us that don't agree with everything. I hope we don't just have an echo chamber audience, right? So I hope there's some people who are like offended. Good, stick with me, right? Because I actually live and work and my parish is in a neighborhood that I'm talking about. Yeah. So if you're offended, I'll put money down. You live in a predominantly white area that's fairly like wealthy <laughs> and you think that I'm being whatever. Yeah. You. Come, come to Kansas City and I'll put you to work and then you can like be corrected. So anyways, when you see... So many African-American men who are without, who have been lied to in avoiding that penance of work. And and sure, there's all kinds of social issues there. There's lack of investment. That's all there. But like at the end of the day, not so much. You know what I mean? Because no matter how much lack of investment there is, that's the greater opportunity to actually like make your bones as a hero. Right. And, there, and and father, forgive me, but th- there are so many programs. Like, and, Im- not not yeah. even that. I mean, it's it's got to be cultural because, well, why does that not affect Nigerians. an immigrant, a, an immigrant who comes across oh the, the border from Central America? Like they're no, forget, he, he's forget willing to stand America. out in front of <laughs> forget Central America, Cyprian, Nigerians. How yeah. come oh, sure. Anywhere, Nigerians? anywhere. How yeah, come it doesn't absolutely. affect Jamaicans? How, you know what I'm saying? So anyways. So I'm just, I'm just. Bringing how, how come it didn't affect Russian Jews who came in like the eight, late 1800s, early well, 1900s, is, and made made fortunes from like Sam Zamuri? You know, well, what the I mean? problem people is, like is that. that, but the problem is when you say that the people who are under the spell, they'll use they have the cloak of whiteness, they have the cloak of like skin color. It's like so. Anyways, there's a whole other thing I want to get to. This didn't point protect them in Germany, but okay. <laughs> hey. Hey, brother. You, I mean, you're not you're I'm kind not of preaching arguing. to I'm the choir. Saying, I mean, I know, like... I know all the arguments, right? But let me just say this: I, I'm bringing this up because you could say, and I hope, man, I just, I hope there's someone who's just upset. I, I'm hoping for some good comments this time. Like, you could say, like, man, you're full of it. You're making these sweeping generalizations, blah blah blah. Number one, I'm married to the same woman. The, I'm married to the the woman of my youth been married to her for you know 23 years i have eight children with her um you know i'm a priest in the canonical orthodox church who actually has a parish i'm not just like online i have spiritual children i can go on and on and on and on and on about just i know what it means to be a husband and a father you know what i'm saying i don't have a silver spoon there's no trust fund for me my dad died of cancer my mom died of cancer i was homeless like i'm just telling you like these things are not something that only the kind of like elected few can gather, understand this is just reality. Right. And the reality is, is that what I'm talking about, the avoidance of, of the penance of for either man or woman, the only way out of that is through repentance. And that living example is found in many quote unquote, African American communities in, in throughout the country that suffer from these passions and to such a degree that whole kind of like social critiques which are really another kind of like uh step towards a cultural logismi right because these are logismi that have been imbibed by a whole people group right so people begin to take on these assaultive thoughts and then allow that to form the reality that's why you get kids who are 
not even black, quote unquote, but they'll imbibe this and think that, oh, this is what it means to act black. I have to do this and this and this, right? Even though everything in their life has been given to them to avoid those traps. Is anybody, are you guys follow me? So this is, yes, I am. this is, this is not just kind of like highfalutin. Okay. Easy for you to talk about whatever I'm telling you, like we had three murders in our neighborhood during Holy week. Like yeah. we, this is, this is not, this is not, you know, and there's, uh, there's these like activists and like woke warriors who they think that they, and they do nothing but hurt black people. Because what I'm talking about right now is the only way out for quote unquote African Americans. And guess what? Quote unquote for anybody. If you are the kind of like, you know, 38 year old, you know, uh, guy from the burbs who's, you know, Latino and white or whatever, and your wife is like leaving you and all these things, this applies to you too, man. Because this is a thing that's begun to infect everybody to pull us away from these fundamental objective truths that are revealed to us in Christ, not just what is ailing us, but the way out of it. So repentance yeah. is the way out of these things. And so getting back to the question, mm. what do you do? Well, you have to really get back to the core of what does it mean to be a husband? And once you understand that, what does it mean to be a man? When you understand that, and not because because Andrew Tate's lying to you too, by the way. Yes. Andrew oh, Tate's oh big time. Andrew yeah. Tate is lying to you. You know what I mean? Andrew Tate's lying to you and mama pajama, mama wine glass, whatever, whoever, like rando woman who wants to be like liberated on stuff, she's lying to you too. Right. Well, for, forgive me, Father. One of the interesting things, and I hadn't even heard him speak about it before, but it was interesting that in this, I listened to this Tucker Carlson two-hour thing with Andrew Tate, where he was just lying the whole time. But one of the most revealing things was, it was the first time I had ever heard him mention the fact that he has children. That he has Whoa. children. Yes. And, that, and then he was talking about, oh, I tell this to the mothers of my kids. And I was like, wait, you mean, but neither one is your wife. So it's like, here you are, and you're going to tell me what it is to be a man. You have oh, children, but man. you're not even a husband. That's yeah. a whole nother layer of like. Yeah. Right. So it's like, like, so now I really can't listen to you. Yeah. yeah. Like it would be what, like now you've disqualified yourself completely yep. from being able to tell young men how to be men. Yep. Yep. yep completely. Yep. You're, yep. you're disqualified. Yep. Listen, it's so treacherous out there. It's so. It's so treacherous out there because one of the hardest things out there, I'm speaking to all my sons out there, one of the hardest things that you guys are going to have to do is to be martyrs. And not martyrs necessarily, although it may come to that in your lifetime, I don't know, God help you. Um, not martyrs in the sense of like someone's going to you know, kill you, like put a bullet in your head, but you have to bear witness to truth. Even if the fact of like everyone says you're wrong, including the the woman you married, God forbid, or God forbid your baby mama, like God forbid, that's the worst. The fact that that's not shameful anymore. The fact that that's, you know what I mean? The fact that we just embrace these things is so problematic, but like this reality of needing to bear witness and you need to be a lion. You need to be a lion among these. Hmm. Part of the problem that I want to address real quick is this idea that a Christian, like, well, that's not that's not very Christ-like, like that whole thing. What does it mean? It means to be courageous. Remember, the cowardly are those who will not inherit the kingdom. It says that in the book of Revelation. So does this mean become, you know, a, a jacked idiot like Tate and just think that it's about, you know, slapping your wife around verbally, you know what I mean? And, and just like, go get me a pot pie. This, that is, that's cowardice yeah. because only a bully and a coward uses his, his, you know, innately, you know, bigger, stronger body voice and all that stuff to intimidate someone weaker than him. That's a coward. But a man who has courage leads through patience, wisdom, tenderness, firmness, Right. Resolve of character, prayer, repentance, like, and even there's a level of vulnerability 
that we can be lied to and thinking the vulnerability means simping and, you know, turning into some sort of disgusting emotional mess by which you have to just kind of fall apart to prove that you are sensitive. That's disgusting. And it's not true. That's not, it's not pathological, right? The repentance I'm talking about, the repentance that the church calls us to is not one of emotional outbursts. If you're a man, right? There's nothing wrong with crying, but the tears of repentance are not the pathological falling apart of a weak psyche. Self-pity. 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 Yeah. That's not yeah. what we're talking about. Where that like the vulnerability is being able to cry tears of repentance because of what you must do. Right? Speaking the truth in love, holding to the truth. You know what I mean? Discipline of yourself, of your children. These are things that are very difficult to do in love. Yeah. Right? Because to discipline your child in anger is easy. To discipline your child in love is one of the hardest things in the world. This is what we're talking about, right? So this is what the church has to offer us and has to offer you in regards of becoming a man in the image of Christ, becoming a husband according to the order of Christ, as it says in Ephesians 5. And with that, you'll be able to lead your wife with the prayer through the, through the grace of God and the prayers of St. Joachim and Anna to actual repentance, because she needs to repent. And she'll see that the, the, the drive to want to control and to want to do all the stuff that's been poisoning her because she's on social media too much. And she's listening to her, you know, bitter, angry, single friend who just wants her to be bitter and ang- angry and single with her too. Like all that poison, she needs your help by leading. She needs your help by praying for her. She needs your help by dying for her. And, and doing these things in hope that God will touch her heart and bring it to that place of repentance so that the cessation of what's um, causing her pain will begin to end. But it only happens through repentance. I Yeah. And Amen. Yeah. One, one, yes, absolutely. And like, I think more, so much was done. There's a lot of grace bringing my wife into the church because for some reason, after a while and learning the hard way, I just shut up. Like, I just like stopped trying to have it be about that's not the Andrew show. It was like, no, how do I demonstrate how to be like an actual partner? Like, how do I demonstrate? Because I wasn't a husband yet. And I certainly like we hadn't born children together yet. So it's like, how do I actually in like the one of the ways that I have found to be most effective with disciplining kids to speak what father was saying just a second ago this is always with discipline saint porfirios talked about his elders would always yell at him discipline him chastise him but there was not a hint of anger in them they would yell but it was like completely calm inside and like i find my kids and sometimes my wife to an extension respond really really well to that because when you start yelling out of like passion or anger, like you lose your, like they're like this, this joker's lost it. Like this guy can't even keep himself yeah. together. That's so like, cool. yeah. Lack, lack, re- lack respect. Yeah. Right. It's they, yeah. they, they lack. Well, I mean, I, there is that, but that is also a part of like, I think the positive masculine is that, is that escalation, right? That it's like, if, if an individual is going to push, if somebody's going to push, then there's always like you don't start out at 100, right? You don't start out w- at like level 11 with things. But it's like if things get pushed, like if my if my kids are just, I, it's always very calm. We're gonna do this. Here's where it's gonna go. Here's the thing. What are you guys reading? I'm reading the last question. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm listening to you. I'm reading our <laughs> no, last. No, I was, question. you were both going. I was like, wait, did something happen? Am I missing something? Yes, yeah, you're really boring. <laughs> I dude. thought there was a group chat. I thought there was a group chat. No, no. I mean, I, but but I think that that is what you're describing, Andrew. Is this idea of like, you if things get escalated to a certain point, as a man, then you have to like, then you escalate. But that doesn't mean that you're doing it in anger. You don't start wow. out at eleven if screaming at somebody. Well, but it's like, frothing. okay, it's about being the floor. The floor. It's about, there you it's go. about being the floor. That's a good I mean, way to like, say it. <laughs> like it, I, I it, it ends here. I'm yeah. the floor of stability. Like exactly, like, exactly. And they have to know, and more importantly, you got to know that not like you, you will end this thing. Right. It's you have to be the floor. You have to be the boundary. 
right? That's that, and that's what women. That's what women inherently want is they well, want, and and they and they forgive me, Father, because this is really. It, it's funny because it's like the inversion of so many of these things were like inverted within like the pickup artist community and the things that Andrew Tate will say and things like that. But it's like, you know, this, this idea of like a woman testing you as a, as a sign, like it doesn't mean that she's not interested, but it's just like, it's in her nature to test that floor. Yeah, just because like it's in the nature of a child to to test the floor because they want to know is this floor but but we do that right if it's like a bridge and it, we're like oh is that we'll put our foot on it and we'll put our foot on it way harder than we're actually going to walk across it right we'll like whack our foot onto it to make sure okay even if i whack on this thing yeah. it stays firm sure. and so it's just like to expect that's why that, we like, well if you're the, the floor that's why I always heard the There you go. There you go. There you because go. to test the boundary, because that's how you understand security. Listen, throwing out all the things, guys. Women want security, men want mm -hmm. respect. That's it. Right? That Very respecting easy. of the boundary, respecting of the floor, the security of knowing, hey, when it falls apart, do you got me? Sure. You know what I mean? That's 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 the mm -hmm. key thing. What's the next question? What you got? The next question is. Okay, from Lion Slicer. Uh, how can a person who's fornicated or contributed to forn fornication possibly feel worthy of marriage and family life? And how can one marry knowing that they formed bonds with other people that should only be formed with a spouse? So yeah. you can keep so this we're not to a talking about. 15. It sounds like we're not talking about adultery here. We're talking about premarital, premarital relationship, which is which is a form a type of, adultery. of adultery. Okay, fair yeah, enough. It is a type of adultery. Yes. So the question's kind of worded. We maybe we need to word it a little bit differently to kind of get to a good answer because, like, it's it it's phrased in a very rhetorical kind of like, "How could I?" You know what I mean? I think the thing is, is that. Um, it, it depends, but ultimately you need to have humility and you need to have an awareness that, um, cause here's what happens on the one hand, someone may think it doesn't matter and they find themselves, I'm going to use this term, which I, I don't like it, but for whatever reason I'll use it right now. Cause I think it's it may be applicable. I'm a high value woman. Well, if you're looking at it that way, I mean, if you're looking at it that way, then the measure in which we discern that is very crass because we have to measure it like, how would I measure a car? Is a car high value? If it has a bunch of miles on it, not so much. You know what I mean? So we have to step out of that realm of, of seeing it like that, right? And we have to be humble and just recognize our sin and recognize that we've made mistakes and sin no more, by the way. Because that's the other thing is stop it. Don't just fall into self-pity and whatever and just like, well, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, whatever. Don't do that. And begin to repent and begin to pursue God. Because if you're focused so much on how could anyone love me when I've done this and that, you're focused on yourself. Yeah. But if you're focused on Christ and repenting, then the grace... And the beauty that's regenerative that comes from repentance will allow you to now be at least in the position to potentially be a good wife or man or husband for that person who God will put to get, who will put you together with that you'll be equally yoked. Right. That that's, that's the thing. The question is, do you want to get married? You may want to become a monastic. I don't know. But if you want to get married and you feel that you don't have the gift of singleness and you want to, you, you feel the need and the desire to, you know, share life in that sense, then just pray, you know, pray to St. Zenga, pray to uh, St. Mary of Egypt, you know, focus on building yourself up in a way that is healthy, you know, um, take care of yourself, not to just look good for the dating app or for the, which, you know, whatever, or for the, the place, you know, where you get picked up, 
work on yourself so that you are in the same way someone would care for for their prayer corner or, or a temple or a church. Work on your life, both mind, body, soul, in such a way that's pleasing to God, and that where you are feeling healthy and and content. I almost said happy, God forbid, content. And what you'll find is the right person will come along. But as long as you're looking at like, oh my gosh, I have this blemish here. Uh, that is a trap and the devil's got you by the toe. Don't do that. So repent, pray, work on yourself in a healthy way, not in a vain way. And put your trust in God. And what you'll find is when you get your eyes off of looking for the thing or the person, something will come. Because very rare now is the one who's kept themselves pure. And that person who's kept themselves pure, maybe they should consider becoming a monastic and offering that to God. I'm just, I'll throw it out there. I'm just saying, but purity is beyond i mean it is a profound commodity spiritually speaking always has been but in these dark days in this evil age this battle uh, it is i mean it's it's something that if you tap into it it's beyond tesla's wildest dreams a few <laughs> yeah. people have it yeah i in like we talked about it in uh, one of the few classes I've good classes I've taken in college is sexual addiction. It's a sexual addiction class that I've taken. I've referenced it a lot because it really made a like a profound impact on me. It, but it's like, I mean, I think it was Saint Basil the Great said, "I've never known a woman, but I'm not a virgin. Mm -hmm. Like I am not a virgin." And like my son, the amount of what they call in the sexual addiction class cultural abuse which is the near pornographic images displayed openly and everywhere. I mean, I can't even be at the Walmart checkout line without seeing like some provocative picture of some celebrity or whatever. And my three-year-old son is looking at it and I have to like, we don't look at that, you know, turn away, you know, and try and focus on something else like that kind of like, it's, there's just like, even that kind of mind purity is just something that's just so, it's just like it's it's beyond I, I haven't seen it yet. You know? I mean, we're in a we're in a wicked age. Yeah. You know, it's like wicked and decadent and it's just everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. No, it is. And I'm not usually that guy, but it's it's the worst. Certainly in my lifetime, I have never, ever known a time in which it's OK to walk around in basically invisible yoga pants in a bra and just walk around the plaza in Kansas city with like coffee. And you're sometimes you're like 15, 16 years old. And it's just like, Oh, that's, it's not only is it okay. It's almost expected. Yeah. It's yeah. Like that's, that's almost the proper attire. Like it's almost like, why are you, why is that not what you're wearing? I know we've talked about modesty before, but the extreme mm -hmm. power that comes from modesty, like the extreme, mm -hmm. like, yeah. like it's like the, yeah. like, I don't know. It's like you can just yeah. you blend in like you're just you just like you just like become like invisible. Like when you're modest, like it's like the things that Americans have been trained to look and value for from you are not present. So it's like the scanner just almost like passes right over. Like I, mean, I just want to say this real quick because this is a thing. And, you know, I'm going to use the platform. This is a, you know, uh, there's people like let's get into this right culture war you know they think it's a culture war thing you know at this i've had women plural and a couple you know men who are their eunuchs come at me over things like modesty and stuff like that They're like well you know notice that at your church and at the russian church you know all the women wear dresses and hand coverings and blah 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 blah, blah. And that's only for Eastern European women and blah, 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 blah. All this stuff, you know, ortho, quote unquote, orthodox people, God bless them, whatever. But I would say this, and even to those who want to be like, yeah, you know, because I've heard the arguments too from people who are cradle, who they say like, oh, well, really, this is the thing. It's just like, there's at that time period, it's a cultural thing, it doesn't have whatever. 
I will hold up any of my daughters against you <laughs> any day spiritually, and you will come up short. You will come up wanting. And because these women, these people have imbibed an understanding of this materialistic world and secular. And just because they are in the institution of the church, they wish to present it in such a way that's like, well, this is, you know, I don't really got to do all that. It's like, yeah, you don't got to do all that. But at the same time, I also understand why you are lacking and weak spiritually, not and not weak in a Christ-like way, weak in a way that is like not desirable and not that you, not a way that you would want it to be. Um, because modesty produces fortitude and vigilance and attention and all these things inside the mind and the soul of not just a woman, but a man as well. Mm. Right. And it is the sure seal that allows the fermentation process to, to work. And I just, I just think this is really important because, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I'm committed to in regards of trying to keep my people, my daughters, especially my daughters, but my sons separate, you know, because not only um, people would say and lie to us, the demons would lie to us and say, well, you can't be holy in this age. That's a lie. Uh, in fact, we have to strive for holiness. It's the only way that we will survive is to strive for holiness and what that means. Because I'm not just talking morality because morale, you know, it isn't just about the kind of morality on a sociological level. It's, it's so much deeper than that. And it's, it is manifested. It's incarnate. It has to be incarnational because if it's not, then what, then, you know, what are you doing? What is this? Right. So that's all part of this as well. This, this has been an interesting through line um, mm -hmm. through all these conversations mm -hmm. today. It wasn't, it obviously wasn't planned, but I find it, you know, may the spirit uh, may it seem good to the spirit in us that this is what's, being needed to to be spoken about i guess i think our assistant just did a great job at finding some some good questions and allowing herself to be guided a little bit because she even said to me when we when she handed me she's like there's kind of a through line here mm -hmm. i was like yeah there absolutely is there absolutely well because the virtues are connected and the mm -hmm. passions are connected That's the right. temptations no. are connected as well That's and right. i mean as right. you know as we descend further and further into the debauchery you know, because I don't see us, you know, and this is probably a topic for another time. I don't really see us coming back. Like we're gonna, like throughout the cultural fads that have come and gone. Like, I don't really see us walking this one back short. Oh, of, no, the tower is going to crumble. No. Nah, yeah. It's going to crumble to ruin. Well, and because what I want to say at the very beginning is when father talked about, like, you're questioning the very nature of reality itself by denying that these are not just realities and not social concepts. You're playing Jenga and you're taking out the bottom like two rows. Yeah. Like you're it's you're not even like messing with stuff at the top. You're not playing it safe. Like, no, you're taking out the bottom two rows. Like you're questioning the very fundamental aspects of just life on earth. And it's just like of of things we've accepted for just thousands of years. And like to undermine that is like the greatest gaslight ever. And this is one thing I want to say on this podcast, just really quick, because it is it is our podcast. I do what I want. We've got five minutes left. I want to pitch this guy this to you guys real quick. And this we can end on right. this. Go ahead. I have this theory that you know how um oh what's the word anecdotal data. Okay. Okay. So anecdotal data yep. has is basically has this smear campaign against it. Mm -hmm. So there's this whole idea, anecdotal data cannot be really admissible in a court of law or whatever, you know, like, you know, when I'm like talking with someone. So this came up because the other well, night, well, you could, it, it's not, I think anecdotal data is permissible in a court of law, but it, it wouldn't be something for like, um, like I'm scientific. Not, it's unscientific. That's what I'm saying. Yes, and and, and if, if I'm, if I'm talking with someone and I say, yeah. well, my cousin Jeb, no, it's right, like, exactly. So what I'm saying here is I was talking with someone about this not too long ago, and we're talking about smoking cigarettes. Now, I'm not in favor of smoking cigarettes. I think it's gross. I used to smoke. I don't want to do it again. I go through the thank you, like glory to God. I don't smoke anymore. I don't ever want to smoke again. Don't like cigarettes. But I am not so sure they cause cancer. I know they are bad for okay. you. 
I know that they okay. cause COPD. I know it destroys okay. your lungs, but I don't, I'm not sure it causes cancer because my grandpa died of cancer. He was Amish or Mennonite his mm -hmm. entire life. Never touched a cigarette. He died of cancer. Uh, my dad, same way, was mm -hmm. Mennonite or Protestant. Never touched a cigarette, died of cancer. My grandma on my other side of the family smoked every day since she was 18, did mm -hmm. not die of cancer died of other health related issues had yep. nothing to do with cancer yep my father-in-law smokes smoked every day since he was 13 two packs a day is not dying of cancer he okay. has severe health and lung problems no cancer and he gets checked out by the doctor fairly mm -hmm, frequently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now i present this anecdotal evidence to somebody who was of, of an academic trained like an mm -hmm. academically western trained mind and they say, yeah, but that's your anecdotal evidence. It it doesn't really matter. The data suggests that there is a link between cigarettes and cancer. And, and another example of this is my daughter. God love her. I'm sorry. I hope one day she doesn't look back. This can embarrass the little Xenia has constipation problems. Okay. My aunt told us feed her a lot of grease. That seems to like like smooth up the gummy works or whatever, and things seem to come out. That's been my experience. Makes and then sense. she looked it up. Makes sense. She looked it up on Google. No, that's not true. Oh, so her so her experience is no longer has any meaning to it. So like her anecdotal data, the data that she's gathered as an individual in light of the evidence presented that she has been given on Google or whatever, no longer has any merit. Because it's not what the experts say. You guys get what I'm saying? Are you seeing well, what I, I think? I think that there's an interesting thing about this anecdote because it's like it's the scientism again, right? But, to where like if you don't present your results in the exact format that is the science that is the science format, like in the paper, even the formatting of your report, and then it has to be peer reviewed and oh, all of that. Sure. And they're just like. We can't do it. Which but peer review? Don't get me started on peer review. It's an echo. Anyway, it's an echo chamber. Well, here's but here's here's the thing about anecdotal, right? If there is so so, perhaps you perhaps somebody might be able to like dismiss anecdotal evidence. Maybe they would be dumb to do it, right? You'd be dumb to do it, and the reason you'd be dumb to do it is any conclusion that you will find about reality there will necessarily be anecdotal evidence that supports it. In other words, right? Like somebody might say, well, giving, giving a child grease, you know, it's just anecdotal that you brought that up. But then they'll say, well, what you should actually do is this, right? But the actual thing, there, there, there must be, for it to be real, there must be anecdotal evidence for that. But that was not my experience. My experience was the counter solution. The counter thing is something that we there wasn't tried. anecdotal evidence. <laughs> no. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying yeah. is my aunt who then came back to me and said, no, you're yes. supposed to feed them avocados. And da, 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 da. it's like, okay, we've done that. That doesn't work. So, this, so, so there you go. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like, it's a gaslight. Yes. It's basically teaching yes. you to ignore what you're experiencing. Yes. That's yeah. And that's so that's I wanted to float that by you guys. Why not? We're here. Whatever. I had like 10 minutes to kill before we're at two hours. I was like, OK, this has been something I've been thinking about. It's like the same thing with people. You can see the programming set back in with your when you're talking with certain people. You can be talking to them and be like, look, my cousin's never bought the got the woke poke. OK, mm -hmm. right. He's never mm -hmm. had covid. But da -da 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 -da, and then they start going back into like mm -hmm. the reasons and the statistics and the stuff like that. So there has to be this like enormous like shift away from people and their anecdotal evidence. So it forgive me, this, it's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult forgive of me. Scientism. I just want yeah because the cult connection is good because I just want to go with that. And maybe I'm wrong for trying to give like a a, a a neat answer to it. This is why I asked. Okay. Yeah, all roads do lead to Rome. It's about again Christ and the undermining of the authority of the church and the priesthood. Because what happens is, is you shift. It's however you want to look at it. We can argue it both ways. It's either the 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 ending result of the movement or the or the kind of like initiation of another wave of it. But this thing of moving authority from the 
actual center of truth to the to those who would wish to wield it. So the elites, the experts, right? Um, you know, I've heard this, you know, it's kind of, it's one of those things, right? And it's my own quote unquote anecdotal experience, but talking with some fellow Orthodox Christians who are not really, um, definitely not in my parish, definitely not my spiritual children, definitely not like, I don't want to, I don't want to introduce a foreign term here, but let's just say not really on my side of the fence, you know, but Orthodox Christians, nevertheless, and, you know, they're my brothers and sisters, God bless them. But, you know, there's a difference, like nobody in our tribe on our side of the fence would use the term, trust the experts outside of being ironic and whatever. But these people do use this. It's one of those little, one of those weird things where kind of culture war or whatever, blah, blah, but like this whole thing of trust the experts. I've had, I've had people with years say something like, I already knew where they were at, but when they say this to me, totally dead serious about trusting the experts about things, not just in regards of quote unquote COVID, but also mental health. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because what it is, is it's taking the center of authority outside of Christ. That's why you get, you know, you get these people. I've seen this before. And this has happened with a couple people. So if you're one of those people who, you know, has encountered me or whatever, and this like offends you, don't worry. It's probably not you I'm speaking about because I've had this happen to a lot of people. But I'll meet people kind of like in their journey, especially over the last, you know, two years or whatever. And I'll begin kind of like laying some things out to them, like, well, Christ can heal you of everything. You know what I mean? And people are like, huh? Like people who are Christians who hearing that, they just, God bless them. I can tell they're wrestling with it, but they're shocked at me. Like, oh, he actually believes that. Oh, you actually okay. believe Are, are you a Christian if you don't? Well, here's the thing. I'm trying to be charitable. <laughs> I'm trying but, to be charitable. But, but I mean, that, that seems I, like, like a, a I, foundational. I'm can you call yourself a Christian if you don't believe that? See, Brian, I'm trying to be charitable because I, I'm tr- I realize that, you know, we all are coming from a place and God's trying to call everyone on board, whatever. I'm trying to be charitable. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a thing because where does that where does that come from? That comes from this undermining of authority. And it's like this whole thing. It's just like, look, all of the movements, right? The decentral, the the decentralization of authority found in Christ in the church and all that. Well, where does that go? Who gets? You know what I mean? It's energy, right? It does. You can't destroy it, so it's going to go somewhere else, and someone else is going to collect it, right? So that's what the secular have done. The demons, blah blah. blah. Isn't this making sense? What I'm saying? Oh yeah. this is 100%. exactly what I was thinking. So yeah. this is this is exactly what the thing is. And so even now it's like I was talking last night uh in that thing, you know, with Buck's um uh group, and I was just saying it like, yeah, you know, I mean the reality is is like we are we are in a place where the reality of martyrdom is more about our being marginalized than it is necessarily the bullet in the head right now. Because you have quote unquote, like everything we said tonight, Orthodox Christians, quote unquote, who, okay, if you don't, okay, Orthodox Christian woman, I'm just, forgive me, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, like, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, but if you don't want to wear a head covering and you want to, you know, if you're you're down for the unisex thing and like you, th- if you don't think modesty is the thing, you don't think those things, you don't think the embracing of the feminine is the thing, even though it's good enough for the Theotokos, should be good enough for you. Anyways, like this, <laughs> this, this whole thing is all fine until you get into this thing of like, well, why do you guys say something to me? You know what I mean? But follow me on this. If you believe that, like, I don't got to do whatever, I don't need to, like, wear a hook of ring when I go to communion, and I don't need to do this, and I don't need to do that, you know, I don't need to abstain when I'm on my cycle, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You stay over there. You know what I mean? God bless you. You stay over there. Why do you feel the need to come over here and try to tell me something? Yeah. Right? Follow me on this, right? Because we could now apply that to anything else. Oh, you feel the need to come over here when I'm saying, like, look, you know, 
if you think that you can just come into the church by, you know, waving your hand and doing whatever, okay. I- I'm not the one who's confessing you. I'm not the one who's communing you. God bless you, whatever. No judgment. That's that's your priest, that's your bishop's deal, whatever. Why do you feel the need to come over here and investigate me? And as St. Paul talks about, you know, a spy out our liberty, you know what I mean? And be like, well, you think, you know, baptisms or you think this or like whatever the thing is, and you want to undermine the authority, you want to undermine tradition, you want to undermine, you know, all this stuff. It's like, that is the step forward from all this in the negative way, because it goes beyond just gaslighting. It goes beyond the actual dismantling of something because it's never, this is what we all saw, right? Hey man, if you want to wear a mask, God bless you. Go ahead. I don't care. Not good enough. No, 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 no. Everybody here needs to wear a mask and everybody here needs to report. But that's we the need whole to make spirit. sure that everything is being written down and given to the authorities and blah, 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 blah. You need to pour bleach in the chalice and all this stuff. Okay. I was just saying, hey, if you want to wear a mask, you know, like, that is that's why it's not enough to just say like well it's it's you know kind of like the gaslighting it's like no there's a real step from that because once you undermine the authority then the next step is to take the authority to assume the authority and then because all these movements are inherently envious you need to now completely decimate or attempt to attack who what you perceived had the authority before does that make sense it's not enough to say it's the it's the paradox of tolerance it's right. Yes. It's like where where uh, Nicholas Nassim uh, Taleb talks about, um, you know, the the dictatorship of the intolerant minority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where it's like it will always the, the things will always move in the direction of those who are the least tolerant, the most intolerant. Right. Just right. because because for most people, they might not care. Right. right. So it's like, oh, like you say, oh, you want to wear a mask? I'm tolerant of you wearing a mask. Yeah, well, except the the person who's wearing the mask is intolerant of you not wearing a mask, yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. so you yeah. let them exist, and and so it's it's just this very interesting paradox to where it's like, you know, the the whole woke thing about oh, you should be tolerant, you should be tolerant. How they got their foot in the door? Oh, mm-hmm. we're just pushing for tolerance, right? Tolerance of tolerance of the alphabet supers tolerance of like us being able to love who we want to love and then it's like whoa 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 wait a second we were tolerant and now you're compl- they're the most intolerant it's the most intolerant so, movement that we've seen since the 1930s yeah the, i mean i mean it's the, thing the meme about it is where too. you yeah have the rainbow colored swastikas on people yeah. like it's the rainbow colored swastik like you guys haven't seen that where they yeah. the nazi there's a black and white picture of the Nazis marching. And then the next one is all the masks have been taken away and it's, they're all have blue hair and they have like, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. It's, it's, there's this, like, I found it. And so it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, you guys, um, it's time to leave earth like that, that YouTube channel is like, is where a lot of these have been really, really good. Like there's these really excellent memes and it's black pill. So just no, it's black. It's all bad. They're saying it's. They're not presenting any solutions. It's, there is no. It's Christ pretty funny there. though. It's pretty it's, funny. It's really funny. It's like, yeah. and they continue to just like point out the ridiculous aspect of. And I would have missed a lot of this stuff, but there's this Calvin and Hobbes comic where they're talking, and basically like Hobbes is asking Calvin, like, "Do you have any New Year's resolutions?" And Calvin's like, "No, I'm not going to do that." He's like, "You have to like, in order to define good, you have to apply certain values." I don't want that, but as we know, value systems are relative. Every system of belief is equally valid, and we need to tolerate diversity. Virtue isn't better than vice. It's just different. And Hobbes says, I don't know if I can tolerate that much tolerance. And Calvin's like, I refuse to be victimized by notions of virtuous behavior. <laughs> and it's like, that was written like 1991. Yeah, Like that wow. was it. written in like 1991 wow. and like just absolutely crushed it. Like that's been something that stick has stuck with me throughout this whole thing is like look at the look to the poets i mean look to the poets and the artists i mean they're going to be picking up on something but um well, that's that's the through line it's you have to dismantle reality well who's the best like, po- who's the best artist or poet now ai 
Yeah. <laughs> Talk about dismantling reality. Goodness gracious. Mic drop. I feel like feel like we ha- well whatever we'll talk about that at some other time <laughs> anyway we are like at like two hours and 15 minutes which is good yeah, this is yeah, fine I, I don't yeah. think i think we've posted it's friday i'm feeling good you know like rather than monday i'm it's the end of the week i've got the day off tomorrow to hang out with my kids and stuff so it'll be fun god willing um i'm gonna end the show now um let's do it so we have a Royal Path dot store as our merch store. We don't see any of that money. Uh, more merch is on the way. We've yep. we've heard the requests from the limited people who requested, and we've decided we want to go in that direction. So there is some more merch coming on the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Atlantis uh, will rise. Atlantis will rise. I will definitely be rocking that shirt. Um, then uh, we don't see any of that money. Two thirds of it goes to St. Mary's or parish. Another third goes to the people who make the merch. We have a playlist I have not updated in about six months, and I'm very sorry, but anytime we mention music, we try and throw it on this playlist, um, Royal Path Playlist Podcast, Royal Path Podcast Playlist on Spotify. Anytime we mm-hmm. mention an artist or music, it goes on there. I'm terribly behind. I apologize. I don't listen to the show, so I don't go back and like <laughs> listen to what artists we mentioned. So it's generally off of memory. And then it's a whole thing. You got to keep a little notepad and just write write some notes. That's what I need to do. I actually need to go back to the episode where we talk about punk. Go, go, go. Yeah. Because we mentioned like nine people in that episode, Natch. And I was like, okay, I need to go back. So I just need to go back and listen to that episode. Mm -hmm. Um, If you want to contact us, a couple people have contacted. Just so you know, someone wrote me a long time ago recommending Batman Dark Fortress. Just so you know, I never wrote back to you. It's okay. This is between me and him right now. Uh, I have I saw it on Amazon tonight. I'm going to order it. I'm going to read it. I have not read it yet. Thank you for your recommendation. It looks awesome. And there's a couple other people who contact me at Andrew at RoyalPath.network. But the official contact for writing, writing in these questions is contact at RoyalPath.network. The assistant that we've talked about several times tonight, she's the person who receives those emails and she's much better at corresponding than I am. You've done a great job. We appreciate her. She's crushing it. She's crushing it. I'm so sorry. Is it Bill who does the Jack? Jack. 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 Crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. Who does the JPEGs? I'm sorry. Or the thumbnails. I'm so sorry. I forgot to shout out to you for a little while. You're crushing it. We love it. I, every single time, a JPEG shows or a, you know, thumbnail. a thumbnail shows up. I was like, awesome. That is yep. perfect. I love right. it. I, the one where the hand reaching out when we're talking about pre list and the hand saying no. Oh, I was like, yes, Very good. absolutely. Very good. Um, and then I think other than that, that is it. That's oh, it. we're on Apple podcast. We're on Spotify and Amazon, Amazon, whatever. We're Everywhere. On. We're everywhere. We're everywhere now. So anyway, take care and thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.